Treating an alkyl halide with base causes 1,2 elimination of hydrogen halide to form an alkene, as I've shown here. We can track the bond making and bond breaking that occurs using arrow pushing. Where the base with the pair of electrons forms a bond with this proton. These sigma electrons in this bond are used to form the pi bond, and these sigma bond electrons go with the halide. This makes a simple picture that's easy to understand, but it's also helpful to look at the transition state. It's a very similar picture. We have base proton bond making at the same time as we have proton carbon bond breaking. And at the same time, we're forming the pi bond, you see the dashed line here, and breaking this sigma bond. This picture tells us a few important things. The one I want to focus on is the formation of this alkene in the transition state. This pi bond is forming in the transition state. I'm going to return to this. First, take a look at the products of a specific reaction. When this tertiary alkyl bromide is treated with base, two products are possible. The product on the left is the major product, while there's a minor amount of the product on the right. Which product is formed depends on which hydrogen is abstracted. When the hydrogen that I've highlighted in blue is abstracted, we form the product on the left. Notice that there are three alkyl groups attached to the double bond. Alternatively, the tan highlighted hydrogen can be abstracted, and that forms the product on the right. This product has only two alkyl groups attached to it. We call that alkyl groups stabilize carbon-carbon double bonds. So the more alkyl groups attached to that double bond, the more stable the product. The major product is also the more stable product. This makes sense. Take a look at the energy diagram. The major product is formed faster to make a more stable product. The product that is formed more slowly is the minor product, and the activation energy to form that product is higher. By definition, the rates are determined by the activation energies. So the major product, which is the more stable one, has an activation energy that's lower, which means the transition state is more stable. Does that make sense? Well, let's look back at the transition state itself. In the transition state, that structure already looks a lot like an alkene. There's a significant amount of the pi bond formed already. So it makes sense that as we substitute alkyl groups for hydrogens in this structure, the transition state will be more stable, just like the alkene itself will be more stable. Alkyl groups stabilize the product and they also stabilize the transition state. Okay, this all makes sense and it's a really nice picture. It's commonly summarized by a statement called Tsaitsev's rule. The more highly substituted alkene is the major product. But this isn't always true. Take a look at these results. When this very same alkyl bromide is treated with a bulky base, that more stable product is the minor product. The major product is the one that is thus highly substituted. This has a very easy explanation. The large bulky base is very sensitive to the steric environment of the protons. This hydrogen has more alkyl groups around it, so it's more sterically hindered. The tan hydrogen is more accessible, so this base preferentially reacts to the tan hydrogen because it's so bulky. The stability of the product is no longer the key factor. This is a general phenomenon. Use of a bulky base favors formation of the Hoffman product, less substituted. This less substituted product is called the Hoffman product because it's the favored product of a reaction called the Hoffman elimination, which we'll take up when we talk about the means. Until then, simply know that referring to the Hoffman product refers to the less substituted product. So here are the facts. With the standard base like KOH, the major product is the more stable product, the one that has more alkyl groups. Using a very bulky base, the major product is the less substituted alkene.